everything after us. You heal us. You guide us. You protect us. And Lord, we praise you tonight. And we thank you for the healing that you put in our bodies when we were born. And we praise you and thank you so much for everything that you do for us. We pray for everyone that is ill, everyone that is sick. Lord, we pour out our hearts to these people that need to come to you. We just pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, I'd like to open up with a scripture tonight. And Colossians 3.15 is the one. It says, And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. And the ministry of healing reading we're doing tonight is the chapter called In Contact with Nature. And it's on pages 261 to 268. And it starts out, it says, Adam and Eve, in their untainted purity, delighted in the sights and sounds of Eden, God appointed them their work in the garden to dress it and to keep it. Genesis 2, verse 15. It says, Each day's labor brought them health, and gladness and the happy pair greeted with joy the visits of their creator as in the cool of the day he walked and talked with them daily God taught them his lessons so it says here that he walked and talked with them and this is what he wants to restore in us it says each day's labor brought them health God wants us to go back to the time when he gave them their work in the garden. He says he planted it, he dressed it, he gave it to them to care for, and it was their shelter by night and their food in the day, and they were constantly surrounded with this beautiful nature. And continuing on in Ministry of Healing 261, it says, The more closely his plan of life is followed, the more wonderfully he will work to restore suffering humanity. The sick need to be brought into close touch with nature. An outdoor life amid natural surroundings would work wonders for many a helpless and almost hopeless invalid. So we have in our, in our Ministry of Healing study guide some questions. And one of the questions for us this week was, What influence does the city have on the sick? And from the book, Ministry of Healing, it says, The noise and excitement and confusion of the cities, their constrained and artificial life, are most wearisome and exhaustless to the sick. And for those who are weak in moral power, the cities abound in dangers. In them, patients who have unnatural appetites to overcome are continually exposed to temptation. They need to be placed under influences wholly different from those that have wrecked their lives. Let them for a season be removed from those influences that lead away from God to a pure atmosphere. And that's why we want to have a lot of wellness centers throughout the whole United States, just like here, out in the, away from the city where the sick can go. And question two, it says, what influence will nature have on the sick? It says, institutions for the care of the sick would be far more successful if they could be established away from the cities. And so far as possible, all who are seeking to recover health should place themselves amid country surroundings where they can have the benefit of outdoor life. Nature is God's physician. The pure air the glad sunshine, the flowers and trees, the orchards and vineyards and outdoor exercise amid these surroundings are health-giving, life-giving. And continuing on, in the next page, it says, Outdoor life is the only remedy that many invalids need. It has a wonderful power to heal diseases caused by the excitements and excesses of fashionable life. 
a life that weakens and destroys the powers of body, mind, and soul. There are life-giving properties in the balsam of the pine, in the fragrance of the cedar, and the fir, and other trees also have properties that are health-restoring. And I thought that paragraph was quite interesting since we're in the book Back to Eden, we're on the section of the trees, and we were just reading last week about balsam and how wonderful it is in healing. And God has provided these things. And it reminds me of that verse in the Bible that says, The leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. And question three says, list some outdoor activities patients could engage in. Now, this is found in Ministry of Healing 264 and 65. It says, plans should be devised for keeping patients out of doors. For those who are able to work, let some pleasant, easy employment be provided. Show them how agreeable and helpful this outdoor work is. Encourage them to breathe the fresh air. Teach them to breathe deeply and in breathing and speaking to exercise the abdominal muscles. This is an education that will be invaluable to them. You know, we don't think so much about the simple little thing of just going outside and getting some fresh air. How powerful it really is. It says exercise in the open air should be prescribed as a life-giving necessity. And for such exercises, there is nothing better than the cultivation of the soil. Let patients have flower beds to care for or work to do in the orchard or vegetable garden. Surround him with the beautiful things of nature. Place him where he can see the flowers growing and hear the birds singing. And his heart will break into song and harmony with the songs of the birds. Relief will come to body and mind, the intellect will be awakened, the imagination quickened, and the mind prepared to appreciate the beauty of God's Word. Question 4 says, Where only can inexpressible peace and joy and rest be found? And as medical missionaries learning to do this work, we need to really consider this paragraph. It's found on page 267 says, men and women in need of physical and spiritual healing are to be thus brought into contact with those whose words and acts will draw them to Christ. They are to be brought under the influence of the great medical missionary who can heal both soul and body. They are to hear the story of the Savior's love, of the pardon freely offered for all who come to him confessing their sins. And listen to this next sentence. This is so powerful. It says, Angels of heaven cooperate with human instrumentalities in bringing encouragement and hope and joy and peace to the hearts of the sick and suffering. So the Holy Spirit can give us the words to speak when we have an attitude to do this work. God will bless us and and uh, the angels will assist us and thoughts will come to our minds sent sent right from heaven and continuing the last little section from the book ministry of healing is a couple of verses that are brought out psalms 46 1 23 4 and isaiah 40 verse 29 it says yea though i walk through the valley of the shadow of death i will fear no evil for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. He giveth power to the faint, and to them that have no might, he increases strength. So that was quite a short chapter that we had on the ministry of healing. We're going to go into a part on hydrotherapy. I would also like to relate, uh, we mentioned a few days ago that there was a man here with fourth stage cancer. And he went home about three weeks ago, and he went to the doctor, and the doctor was amazed at how well he was doing. And he wanted to know everything. He wanted to know what program they were doing, what he was eating, what teas he was drinking, just everything he was doing, they wanted to know, because they were just so impressed. And so they told them, the doctor, about the Gerson therapy and gave him a lot of 
places to go on the internet to search things out. So we can praise God for that. 75 years old, fourth stage cancer and getting better. Okay, I want to talk about hydrotherapy a little bit tonight. And hydrotherapy is, I would say, right up there along with exercise because it is a kind of a form of exercise. Now, we, we have even said that exercise is 70% recovery. Perfect circulation is perfect health. And to get the circulation moving, you can either do it through exercise or you can do it through hydrotherapy. And what the hydrotherapy does is it exercises even the internal organs. The main type of hydrotherapy we like to use is hot and cold. And this consists of either two tubs, one you fill with hot and the other one you fill with cold. Put them right next to each other. If you're setting up a, a wellness center, this is one of the things you will use more than anything is your big tubs. Try to make them so that they are six feet long. You can submerge a man into them and you can fill them deep. So what it does is when you get into the hot, you stay in there four minutes and the temperature of the hot can be anywhere from 105 to 114 tops. And it depends on the condition of the person, how hot you, and the age of the person and things like that, how hot you want to make it. And then the cold can be anywhere from 45 degrees to 75. And again, taking consideration the heart condition and and especially if it's the first time that they're doing it, you want to gradually increase or decrease the temperatures and let them, you know, get used to it um, each time you do it, each day. And you go back and forth four times, starting with the hot, four minutes, and then you go into the cold for one minute. And then you go back and forth four times and you end with cold. You get out and you go to bed and you rest for at least 20 minutes to half an hour. And what this does, it pulls all the blood to the surface of the skin while you're in the hot. And then when you get in the cold, it pushes it into your internal organs. And so it really gets the circulation going and speeds up healing. So if you're like, if you have like liver cancer, well, if you're pushing the blood up into the liver and then you're pulling it away from the liver. You're bringing blood in and pulling blood out, bringing in nutrients, and then when the blood goes out, taking out toxins. So increasing the circulation always increases and speeds up the healing. It helps so much with pain also because pain is your body screaming out for circulation. And so when you increase that circulation, the pain goes away. Okay, the next thing you can do hot and colds for in, in a bucket. If you have like gangrene on your foot or if you have maybe an infection and the red line is running up your leg and that will increase the circulation and get that poisons out quickly. And then especially if you have a line running up your leg after you do the hot and colds, you want to pack it with either charcoal or clay, which will pull the toxins out of the foot. And you can do for like rheumatoid arthritis pain, you can do uh, on, you know, your hands, hot and cold. And also you can use fomentations for hot and cold. You can do a sitz bath, hot and cold, and a needle spray, hot and cold. Now we're going to talk about those other modalities, but hot and cold is all to increase the circulation. Also with the full body, hot and cold, it increases your white blood cells and which can speed up healing if you're fighting an infection or bacteria, virus, molds, funguses, anything like that. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the needle spray. Now this, in Back to Eden, uh, you can read about it, and when we get to that section, we'll probably go a little further into it, but there's a picture of a needle spray and uh, some paragraphs on it. And the needle spray... You don't use needles. You get like a, a very strong hose nozzle and you put a lot of pressure behind it and somebody that's into plumbing can set that up for you. You use it in a shower or in a shower area. If you're going to build 
an area to do your wellness center, you want to build a, a long area about 10 feet long where you've tiled the whole thing and then you can use this needle spray and spray people and what it does is you can spray them with really hot water and then spray them with cold water in an area and not only does it increase the circulation from the hot and the cold but it increases it from this spray hitting them and we have actually helped people with break up tumors with this breast tumors and other tumors and it works wonderful we we'd, we'd like to set that up here eventually but we haven't yet but it's in our plans so you can do the hot and the cold with with the needle spray anywhere on the body except you want to avoid the face the next thing is sits baths now a sits bath is where you have a couple of tubs that were made specific for a sits bath is the best and that is where you just can fit in your buttocks and your pelvic area and maybe your lower abdomen. And you sit into this hot water. And you can either do just hot, depending on the condition, or you can do hot and cold. And so you have two tubs across from each other. One has cold water and this water you can have a little bit hotter and a little bit colder because you're not doing the whole body. And also, if you're doing the hot and cold with your foot or your hand, you can have it more than 114. You can go up to 116 or so and down to 32 degrees. Um, and you can go back and forth. And you go back and forth as far as you're comfortable. You don't want to burn yourself. You don't want to, um, you know, be so cold. And if you've got somebody that you're helping that maybe has... Um, peripheral neuropathy or gangrene where maybe their circulation isn't so good so they don't have good feeling you need to stick your hand in there in the water with them as you're helping them so that they do not get burned you you for sure know because their feeling isn't good enough okay so on the sits baths you can have it ice in the cold sit floating in the cold when you get in it's the best to do and it's and then the hot can be you know definitely 112 114 and so you go back and forth about the same maybe three minutes to one minute you might want to cut it a little shorter three minutes to a half a minute in the cold back and forth and it's good for things like hemorrhoids fibroids in the uterus Anything that you might have in the lower trunk area, in the pelvic area, any cancer problems, increase the circulation there, speeds up healing. Same principle. Um, the next hydrotherapy is a neutral bath. And a neutral bath is a bath that you take at your body temperature or maybe a half a degree or a degree lower. So it would be around at 98 degrees. And a neutral bath, you want to completely submerge and what this does is it helps you with mental disorders anxiety and insomnia high blood pressure but you want to stay in there for about a half an hour to an hour and if you feel anxious or nervous or upset or depressed or any mental t type of disorder this is the best it will relax you. It will calm you down. It will help you to have a good night's sleep. So that was the neutral bath. The jacuzzi is another uh, type of hydrotherapy, which has jets. And this kind of takes the place of a massage in a way. Increases the circulation. It moves your lymph. The only way your lymph moves is when you are either walking, exercising, getting a massage, or in a jacuzzi. So somebody that is bedridden, this is a wonderful thing. If they can't get out and walk, they need to be in the jacuzzi a couple of times a day and get that lymph moving because that lymph is what carries your white blood cells and what increases your immune system is getting that flowing. So they used to have, I remember seeing pictures in the olden days, they used to put people on like a seesaw those little you know ch in the playgrounds you see a seesaw and they would move them up and down up and down and that would move their lymph 
and it would help them to get well. So a jacuzzi will, will do that. And also if it's hot, then it will cause a fever. The next thing I want to talk about is a fever therapy. You can get in a jacuzzi. If your jacuzzi is set as high as it'll go, which is usually about 104, you can stay in there for about a half an hour to 45 minutes and get your temperature up to what needs to be to increase the blood, white blood cells and to help with other pathogens, killing pathogens in your body that might be causing your arthritis pain and muscle pain. So a fever therapy is really good to increase the white blood cells. That's, of course, in my testimony that I had Lyme disease, what I used. And we've had several people that have come here with a condition of anxiety attacks. We have used the fever therapy with after they've done that a few times, they don't have their anxiety attacks anymore. So it could have been caused by a pathogen. Several people that's happened to have come here and just their anxiety attacks just don't come back. Another thing I want to talk about is fomentations. And of course, we talked a lot about that on one of our first classes. But since we're talking about hydrotherapy, I just want to add it in this little group here. Fomentations are a local area of hot and cold using ice and a hot pack. And the hot pack is placed on the area where you're wanting to increase the circulation, say like your lungs for lung cancer, bronchitis, emphysema, pleurisy. Uh, it can be on your kidneys. Um, it can, you can put it on your abdomen, uh, doing hot and colds for constipation, helping to increase the uh, peristalsis. You can put it on your joints for rheumatoid arthritis. And we've even done the eyes. And you have to be very careful with the eyes, though. Because as far as I can remember, that was how Fanny Crosby lost her sight, was using fomentations on her eyes, and it was too hot, and she burned her the cornea of her eyes. But anyway, it does help with glaucoma, and problems with the eyes. And the sauna is the last one I'm going to mention, which increases uh, the ability to sweat. Your skin is your largest organ for elimination. And this elimination, as you sweat, gets rid of all kinds of toxins. And so the sauna is wonderful, and if you do infrared sauna, it actually even penetrates into the skin and can kill pathogens. The infrared can. It's a wonderful healing modality that, that uh, we include in our hydrotherapy. So if you have any questions on hydrotherapy, I want you to save them for the end, and we will discuss it a little bit further at our seminar that we're going to be having. We're going to be practicing quite a bit of these modalities in May. Okay, we're going to go into our Back to Eden book. And we are on page 212. And we're still in the trees. We're on the elder tree. And the part used is the flowers, leaves, bark, roots, and berries. It says um, they're all useful. It says the flowers increases the flow of urine and is cooling. It's good for building up the system and is very useful in liver and kidney diseases. Caution should be exercised when using elder as poisoning may result if the fresh plant is used. The cooked berries are harmless and are frequently used to make jam or pies. And that's very interesting because I did not know that. I have actually picked elderberries and have used them without cooking them. And the next tree is the eucalyptus. The part used is the leaves and the bark. It says the leaves and bark are very useful in fevers, acute and chronic bronchitis, in its various forms, asthma and similar ailments. The oil made from the leaves may be inhaled for asthma, diphtheria, or sore throat. And the next one, which I'm very interested in because of that verse in the Bible about the fig, 
Isaiah put a poultice, a fig, I don't know if it was the leaf, after reading this, could have been the leaf, whether it was the fig or fig leaves. And so when we got to this in Back to Eden, I was very interested to find out what are the medicinal properties of the fig. It says the part used is the fruit and the leaves. It says split open the fresh ripe fruit and lay it on a boil or a carbuncle and it will give great relief. It says when the fruit is broken off the tree before it is ripe, a milk escapes that has wonderful healing properties. It may be put on sores and boils. If this milk is put freely on warts, it removes them. Okay, and then it says something, says the fig leaf is excellent to wash old sores. And because of the presence of sorolines in fig leaf tea, do not go into the sun after applying the tea to your skin as it will cause a severe sunburn. It says fig tea is good for any kind of lung trouble. It's continuing on about the leaf now, such as asthma and bronchitis and is a splendid medicine for dropsy, spasms, and convulsions. It says that you can drink three or four cups a day, so it's not something we need to be concerned about it being harmful in any way. And here's a wonderful cough syrup. It says a syrup made of figs makes a very excellent cough medicine. It can be used alone or with a little lemon added. It says take a pound of figs, cut them up, and put them in a quart of water. Simmer for a few minutes, then put them in a cheesecloth and squeeze out all the juice possible. Add the juice of two lemons and a little honey if desired. This makes an excellent cough remedy. Okay, that was the fig tree. Now we're on the fir tree. And the part used from this tree is the bark, and it says that it's a good blood purifier and general tonic. So it didn't say a whole lot about the fir tree, but the next one is the hemlock, and we have a lot of hemlock here on our property, so I was interested in this one. It Parts used is the inner bark and the leaves. It says it should not be taken during pregnancy, the leaves. And it says the bark can be used for canker sores in the mouth, and it can be used in dropsy with splendid success as it increases the flow of urine, has a healing effect on the kidneys and bladder, and is good for gravel in the urinary passage. It says it's good when applied externally as a wash for gangrene, old sores, and ulcers. That was the hemlock. The next one is the hickory. The part used is inner bark and leaves. It says it's good for washing ulcers and sores, for diarrhea and kindred troubles. It's very useful in colitis. So I thought that was interesting. Many people, they get colitis and they, they just don't know what to do for it. And we had somebody that came with actually bleeding ulcerated colitis and going on a carrot juice diet with cayenne cured him. And of course, the Lord with prayer. So right here it says that the hickory inner bark is very useful in colitis. Next one is iron wood. Part used is the inner bark and the inner red wood. It says a good time to gather the bark is in the later part of the summer. It, it is a good tonic and a splendid blood purifier and is very beneficial to the stomach. That was iron wood. Juniper. And the part used is the berries and the new twigs. It says the juniper tree yields berries that are a most wonderful medicine. And Jethro Kloss continues on. He says, I used to gather these berries when just a young lad. For kidney and urinary troubles, take one heaping teaspoonful of juniper berries, granulated or chopped up, or the whole berry, one teaspoon of granulated peach leaves, and one teaspoon of marshmallow, and mix them together. And you steep this and drink one to three cups a day. It's important to remember that large doses or prolonged use may irritate the kidneys, so it should be used with caution if you have a kidney infection. It said it's also good for a brain medicine, juniper berries. And continuing on, 
on that it says combine equal parts with rue makes an excellent remedy for any kind of head trouble it is soothing and strengthening to the nerves and it also helps the vision in fact it strengthens the nerves throughout the whole body so it's good for sciatica problems and gout or pain in any part of the body it says it's good to, to kill worms in both children and adults and this is something interesting it says the ashes of the wood a teaspoonful to a pint of boiling water is a splendid remedy when used as a wash for itch scabs on any part of the body or the sores of leprosy the berries are good for convulsions they make good medicine for palsy so that's quite a interesting herb there juniper the next one is laurel and it also is called the bay tree so this is where we get bay leaves the part uh, used is the bark berries and leaves it says the bark leaves and berries of the bay are used the bark is slightly astringent and is highly recommended for stones in the kidneys and bladder it is a splendid remedy for the pancreas the spleen and various liver troubles the berries are also very helpful during childbirth if taken when the time of delivery is at hand and they also help in expelling the afterbirth it is a regular cleanser and a very good remedy for chronic coughs consumption and asthma when there is shortness of breath it will destroy worms in the body help to increase the flow of urine and an excellent tea for those troubled with uh, fermentation and gas in the stomach and bowels a strong tea made of the berries or the oil of the berries is most excellent when applied to rheumatic or arthritic joints and is good for nerve trouble or pain in the bowels or womb good for any kind of cramps or pain in the chest or numbness in any parts of the body and that was the, uh, the bay tree or it's also called laurel the next one is linden the part used is the inner bark leaves and flowers useful for colds and the hot tea will promote perspiration and cleanses the system of mucus especially the kidneys bladders and stomach the next one is magnolia the part uses the bark it says the magnolia tree which is admired so much for its beautiful and fragrant flowers has wonderful medicinal properties that are little known to man the bark is very effective for many ailments in the first place it can do the work of quinine leaving no bad effects after its use the medicinal properties of the magnolia will cure the tobacco habit when taken with other hygienic measures so the part used of course is the bark if we can remember that for the quinine the maple and if some of you knew that brother harold was here last uh, monday and he is feeling so much better we've used several herbs to help with his uh, malaria and he is his fever is gone completely and he's actually even working out in the garden now okay that was magnolia good for quinine and the next one is maple the part uses inner bark and leaves the inner bark of the maple tree and also the leaves are a splendid medicine for both the liver and the spleen and are very soothing to these organs in fact they are a good medicine for the whole body acting as a tonic and soother of the nerves and now that was the maple and there's lots of maple trees around and that was the inner bark that's especially good the last tree is the oak and it is a wonderful tree the one that they're talking about is the white oak it says that its medicinal properties are tonic and astringent especially and aseptic and anthelmintic it says it's a very strong astringent a strong tea made from the white oak bark is excellent for wound troubles and vaginal discharge it will also expel pinworms it's good for piles or hemorrhoids hemorrhages any trouble in the rectum of course any astringent strong astringent is going to be good for hemorrhages and dr drawing things up like hemorrhoids and healing sores closing up sores and wounds so it stops hemorrhages in the lungs stomach and bowels and the spitting of blood and bleeding in the mouth 
Uh, it says it's very useful in goiter. Now, we haven't read that very much. Very many things are good for goiter, but let's remember this inner bark is good for goiter. We have a lot of people suffering with those right now. Many people are getting goiters because of the lack of good minerals in our inorganic foods. And the hardening of the neck. It's good. For goiter, fold a small towel or some cheesecloth several times to make a compress and moisten with the tea. It says tie the compress around the neck, leaving it on all night and covering well with a woolen or flannel cloth. For varicose veins, take the tea internally and bathe the veins externally with a strong tea three or four times a day, diluting the tea a little if there is any open source. It's also good to moisten a cloth with the tea, wrap it around the legs, and cover well with flannel. This will reduce the swelling and hard tumors. This oak trees are wonderful. It says the powder of the acorn made into a tea helps to counteract the poison of venomous creatures. So let's remember that one too. Okay, that's the end of the tree. And so if Brother Harold's available... We'd like to have him get on and give us a, another testimony. Good evening to everybody. Good evening. Yeah, nice to hear this wonderful lecture that we had tonight about all these barks and trees and natural healing. I have two personal experiences I'm going to tell you tonight. First of all, was a, a wife of a high rank of the Army of Brazil. We call one time to our office and says, I'm going to be in your church tomorrow. What time do you want me to be there? And I want you to heal my wife. And I say, whoa. First, I'm not a doctor. Second, I do not know what this woman has to treat someone on the, who has a right hand on the office of the government you are getting in trouble too high. But trusting God, I say, come in, 11 o'clock tomorrow. And lo and below 11 o'clock came this very tall man with this woman and a daughter to our headquarters in Brazil, in the capital of Brasilia. And the lady was screaming, as could be in a little hand handkerchief. We have the service from 11 to 12 or Sabbath morning, and I was directing the service at that time, and I could see the woman was very uncomfortable. And I was praying all the time, say, Lord, I do not know what this woman has, and I know you need to cure her. It's your church and your work, and I'm your servant. As soon as the service was over, I took her to the office, and then I talked with the husband and says, what's the problem? He says, we visited several doctors in town. My wife has an ear infection, and the redness comes to the hand, and the hands is numb, and the headache is too painful. She cannot handle anymore. Antibiotic is not working. Painkiller is not working. And we come to you. I heard that you can help us out. And I told him that uh, I was not a physician, but uh, we believe in a great physician that could cure her. I quickly went to my room and I pray. And I say, Lord, I know olive oil with garlic is good for ear infection. My mom used to use all the time for babies at home. But in that case, I thought was not good enough. I quickly run to a Bible worker woman that used to live next to us, and I say, Sister Oliveira, what would you do for an ear infection that is going to the head, the hands, and the lungs? It says, onion juice. I say, great. I quickly went back to my room I get the biggest onion I could, I grate it, I strain it, and I came and I put in the ear. Less than five minutes, the woman had no pain. It was a miracle. Mm -hmm. And then 
the man says, he's not going to eat her ear up. I say, no. You just leave there, let her put a little cotton. And uh, you go home. When you arrive home, you wash with uh, oxygen water. Clear this goo out, all this onion out, and you put again. And if the pain continues, come back tomorrow, and you'll do something else. And then I call in in the afternoon, I say, how she's doing? And the husband answers, says, the pain is gone. I say, good, let her to sleep, today and tomorrow, as much as she need, and let me uh, call you tomorrow afternoon. And the next afternoon I call, and the daughter answers, says, Mama is doing very good, no more pain. And I'm going to your church tonight to be a Thanksgiving. Sunday night she show up and says, I praise the Lord, my, my mom is cured. Lord has many ways to cure people. And that was one of the great miracles that I saw with my own eye. Ready for another one? Yes. Okay, uh, this has happened uh, in, Bra in, uh, in the same city, Brasilia. We had the headquarters in Taguatinga. And a uh, man arrived, he was a copper to work, and he arrived bleeding from the mouth. And I say, what's happened with you? He says, I think my ulcer in the stomach perforate and I'm vomiting for three days and I have a high fever and nothing goes and stay in the stomach, neither water and I'm very, very weak. And I say, wow, this case is very hard. I never treat anyone bleeding. But let us uh, do whatever we can. We open the books, look a little bit what should do and we try to minimize her fever with some baths and for three days the fever didn't give up and the bleeding was continually. I said, look, I can take you to emergency room because you are losing too much blood and you are very weak. He says, I'm not going from where? From here, I'm going to stay here and you must do something for me. I said, okay. Well, we had some banana trees in the patio of the property of the church and the book said the water of banana tree would heal ulcers. We try potato juice, we try many other things and everything would come out. I said, look, the only thing I have not tried, I have no experience, but the book said that if we cut the banana tree, take the water out and drink that sap, it will heal your ulcer. Are you willing to do so? He says, at this point, I, did, I will do anything. Okay, went to the back of the property, got a nice young banana tree full of water, and we took one whole cup of that sap, and I gave to him. I said, look, in faith, let's pray, and you drink. If that stays in your stomach, will continue with some different things until you completely heal. And the amazing thing, that water didn't come out. It stayed in. The bleeding stopped, and in three days the man was walking. A little weak, sure, but the, the ulcer was completely kind of uh, capped, and the healing process started. And he never had ulcer again. It was a miracle. He lived many, many years. We become good friends. And the Lord healed him with a simple banana sap. As we can uh, learn from the natural books, they have many ways that the Lord can use. We just need to exercise faith and we need to trust that the Lord is going to do a miracle. And He does. Amen. Thank you. 
So we can open up the lines and see if anybody would like to give a comment, a question, or a testimony. We would like to hear. We've got a few minutes left before we close this meeting. I have one question. When you were talking about the hydrotherapy and the foot stop, yes. you know, have you ever had personal experience with anybody that it helps menstrual cramps? It seems like it would, but I didn't know if you would have had any personal experience. No, I haven't had any personal experience with it, but if I had bad cramps, I think I'd probably try it. Okay, well, we will give the assignment for next week. Uh, for class 24, the assignment for February 17th is to read 271 to 276 General Hygiene in the Ministry of Healing book, or you can listen to the chapter online and answer the study guide questions, and then um, also read 222 to 232 of Back to Eden. The memory scripture for next week is John 14, verse 12, John 14, verse 12, Romans 12, verses 1 and 2, Romans 12, 1 and 2, Psalms 139, verse 14, Psalms 139, verse 14, and Psalms 66, verse 18, Psalms 66, verse 18. Our closing verses, Psalms 42, 11, says, Why art thou cast down, O my soul? And why art thou disquieted within me? Hope thou in God, for shall I yet praise him who is the health of my countenance and my God. And Ezekiel forty-seven twelve says, And by the river upon the bank thereof, on this side and on that side, shall grow all trees for meat, whose leaf shall not fade, neither shall the fruit thereof be consumed. It shall bring forth new fruit according to its month, because their waters they issued out of the sanctuary, and the fruit thereof shall be for meat, and the leaf thereof for medicine. Ezekiel 47 verse 12. And Ezekiel 34 verses 2 through 4. And I, I didn't mean this verse as a rebuke to anybody, but for us to think about it, take it personally, we are all born in the kingdom of God as missionaries and as ministers. And this is who God counts as, as his people and his ministers. It says, Ezekiel 34, 2 through 4, says, Son of man, prophesy against the shepherds of Israel. Prophesy and say to them, Thus saith the Lord God unto the shepherds, Woe be to the shepherds of Israel that do feed themselves. Should not the shepherds feed the flocks? You eat the fat, and ye clothe you with the wool. Ye kill them that are fed, but ye feed not the flock. The diseased have ye not strengthened, neither have ye healed that which was sick, neither have ye bound up that which was broken, Neither have ye brought again that which was driven away. Neither have ye sought that which was lost. But with force and with cruelty have ye ruled them. God is very concerned about how we treat those that are sick and those that are broken and those that are lost. Very concerned. So let us, if there's no other comment, let us go ahead and bow have a closing prayer. Our dear Heavenly Father, we do thank you for the privilege of contemplating your natural healing ways and what our duty is and how we can better help those that are sick. Help us to be able to bring people to the knowledge of that they need to be outdoors, that there's healing in your the sun that you made and the air and also in knowing that you have forgiven our sins and that we have peace with you. Help us to lead people to health, to lead them to you, who is the Savior of our body and our soul. We do pray that you will keep us throughout this week, 
Help us to remember why we are here on this earth and that it is not our home and prepare us for your soon coming. May we be worthy of the name of your child and give us a burden for souls and help us to fulfill what you have for us to to bind up the broken and to heal the sick and help us not to use people but to be there to give, to be the lenders and not the borrowers. And we thank you for all the te- for the testimony of uh, Brother Harold, and I do pray that you will help us all to be able to have those kind of testimonies, to apply these natural remedies that you have sanctioned. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.